In this chapter, we'll talk about how to increase our chances in the labour market. Entering the job market is never what we expected. We had some ideas that our parents taught us, and it turns out they're all outdated. We hear more and more contradictory information, and the confusion just increases. On one hand, it's difficult to find a good job. On the other, employers complain how hard it is to find a good employee. What can young people do to make this journey easier. Firstly, make the most of all the years you spend on your education. What does this mean? Learn as much as possible. Try to spend all those years without problems and paying attention to what you learn. If you have good grades, you can even get scholarships, interesting internships, student exchanges, you can attend science clubs and small organisations all that's accessible for free. Let's think about the following question. Where do you imagine yourself in the next five years? Let's think of about an example. You want to be a furniture designer? Find 10 furniture designers you like the most. Find their professional profiles on, say, LinkedIn or other websites. See what their background is. Write them a message and ask for hints. There's a chance somebody will reply. Look at the websites with job announcements. See what qualities are required. Also, big companies such as IKEA have recruitment events and specifications that you can find online. Take an interest in your field. Read books and magazines about it. And last but not least, look for internships, even if they're not financially beneficial. There's no better way to learn about the work environment than entering it, even for a short time. The last stage of formal education is a perfect time for building natural networking skills. Try to attend lectures, conferences and parties. Be active in your classes and enrol on some relevant courses. Most recruitments are finalised before the announcement even gets to the job agency. People want to work with someone they know or someone who has been recommended and has a good reference. It's not nepotism. Recruitment is challenging and most company owners just want to hire a person who they know will be professional and the right one for the job. Someone from your network might hear about the vacancy and let you know. So, let them know you know. As mentioned before, you should look for opportunities where you can do something outstanding. You might have an interesting hobby, be active in clubs or local self-government organisations. You can volunteer. Some organisations will give you an opportunity to help organising a conference, a concert or other big event. It will make you more resourceful and sensitive. You can have work experience. Look for every opportunity to work not always in your field. Doing even more, for example, writing a blog and learning new skills, looking for business ideas. Find your own way and be an interesting person. Sooner or later, at the job interview, you'll be asked to describe yourself. What are you good at? Which of your features make you a valuable team member? What are you afraid of? What do you need to work on? These are just some of the examples of questions that most young people don't know the answer to. They have some idea about who they are, but they can't name their skills. The first advantage of knowing how to name your capabilities is that you'll be asked directly on your job interview. It's good to know how to answer these questions to give somebody the best picture of who you are. Moreover, this can contribute to making the best strategy of your self-development. You'll make an effort to improve or hide your weaknesses and highlight your strengths and the things you're good at. 
To cut a long story short, you want to be successful after graduating? Think about the mistakes of those who weren't successful and try not to repeat them. Analyse the behaviours of those who have become successful. Look at the market and fit into it. Finally, be different and stand out.